This is Badir McClary, and welcome to the Reality Talks podcast. On Reality Talks, we speak with working artists and arts professionals on navigating the art world. Through introspective conversation, our guests provide knowledge on the art market, public projects, and the studio and artistic process. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Reality Talks podcast. I'm here with the wonderful executive director of Mural Arts of Philadelphia, Miss Jane Golden. Good morning, Jane. Thanks for having us. Hi, I'm so happy that you're here. So for most people who grew up in Philadelphia, like me, I had no idea what mural arts was. I would see tons and tons of murals, beautiful artwork everywhere, but never knew where it came from. Tell us what mural arts does. Mural Arts is an organization that's completely dedicated to making sure that every citizen in the city of Philadelphia has access to art. So we are a public art organization, but we're a community art organization, community public art organization with a very defined social purpose so that we look at the world through the lens of art and social change. So that also means that we believe that young people, um, young adults, um, people in the behavioral health system, like that everybody can be involved in making their mark on the city and that there should be really wonderful, rigorous programs in abundance for people. And that for us, it's it's a matter of equity Mm -hmm. and access and opportunity. Um, So that's probably even more important than the art making, although, of course, the art making is really important. It's really, it's like saying, like, we really think that you know, for too long we felt that art could only be behind the walls of galleries and museums, mm-hmm. but it's really, in a way, like oxygen. It's for all of us. We, we, you know, and it's we've been deprived of it. I think if you look at this field historically, um, and I feel really proud and privileged to do the work. Nice. How, like, how did you get into working with mural arts? Like, I did a quick background and understand that you are an artist. Yeah. Um, so how did how did you transition from an art Artist to an arts director? Well, I, you know, I went to, um, just a quick story, so I went to Stanford, I was a double major, fine art and political science. I thought I'd end up, I loved art, but I thought I'd go to law school. Mm -hmm. I moved down to LA and that changed my life because I saw the most extraordinary murals there. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was the early 80s and there were, you know, I think LA was probably the center of the mural universe. And I was really lucky, I got hired by this woman, Judy Baca, Mm -hmm. who's an amazing Mm -hmm. artist, muralist, change agent. And what a great mentor for me, you know, as a young woman, woman just you know I was 22 years old in LA and I got this grant from Judy Baca and I did this mural I did a mural because I when I was growing up I had parents who loved the murals that were created during the 1930s in mm-hmm, this country mm-hmm. so I was sort of had a mural friendly family so yeah when I got to LA and saw the murals I'm like oh yeah murals like social realism like art matters like art can be connected to politics mm. so I did a mural and I did another one another one that I thought like this is really what I want to do mm-hmm. then I became quite ill I have lupus so I came back east I, I grew up not too far from here in Murrayhead, New Jersey. Okay. And um, I was coming up to Philadelphia to go to the hospital and I read this article about Wilson Good. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Wilson Good, Philadelphia's first black mayor. Mm -hmm. There was huge excitement about that the fact that Good had won. Uh, And and there was an article that he had started this anti-graffiti network because yeah. Philly had this graffiti crisis. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> and in the article, Wilson Good said that it came to his attention that a lot of the kids liked art, so part of the program would be an art component. That's mm-hmm. all it said. So I went home that day, and I decided to send my resume to Wilson Good's office. So I wrote him a letter. This is before email. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking yeah. about like, when <laughs> dinosaurs roam the earth. I said, Dear Wilson Good, I would be so honored to work in your administration. You know, I've attached my resume and some some examples of my work and a few weeks later I got a call from this man who was head of arts and culture Mm -hmm. Oliver Franklin and he knew Judy Baca and so he said he called Judy up and he said should I hire this woman Jane Golden she just sent me a resume and Judy Baca said she will drive you crazy and you should hire her for sure and so I went up for an interview and Oliver sent me to Tim Spencer the new director of this anti-graffiti network Mm -hmm. and Tim I mean it was a very short interview he was like look you're hired if you want the job. Your salary is twelve thousand dollars a year. Your title will be field representative. We're not sure what to do with an artist. You'll mm-hmm. have like a thousand graffiti writers. To, you have to figure out what to do. Sort of good luck, yeah. you know, because it was a new program. Yeah. You, know, you know, everybody was just figuring out what, <laughs> what to do. But I was so excited. I was like so like I couldn't believe like I was so lucky to get this job. Now was now with that excitement bringing that into like with the first mural was was the excitement uh, reciprocated by the community? 
city? Were they as excited as you? Well, I would say our very first mural was the mural we did on the Spring Garden Street Bridge. So mm -hmm. two sides, mm -hmm. 600 feet long. And Wilson Good told me that if I could complete it by a certain deadline, some dignitary was visiting Philadelphia, and we had a, if we could complete it by this point, that he would consider giving me a full-time job with the Anti-Graffiti Network, because I was hired part-time. So I was like, okay, great, whatever we have to do. So I worked with a group of kids from Mantua. Mm -hmm. Now in Mantua, everybody was thrilled that we were gonna do something with the bridge. A, we were employing mm -hmm. tons of young people, which was the MO of anti-graffiti. Yes. Like 3,000 kids a summer. It was wow. unbelievable. I had, Kids worked full-time, they were promoted to full-time city officials. I mean, it was an amazing time. Yeah. It was when there was so much more government money and government money was put to good use. And now I can't believe it's become a bad word. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> and I want to do everything I can to reverse that. But anyway, so then, um, so there was a lot of excitement. And I think there were about 100 kids that we worked with. And so we had a, so people, kids worked in shifts and mm -hmm. had to quickly hire some artists to help because it was yeah. such a daunting task. We had house paint, we had big brushes. It was just crazy, we had a little <laughs> shopping cart. The rec center was like 10 blocks away. Every day we moved our paints back and forth. The, the cart spilled. P people were like, what are you doing? So you got stuff, you yeah. got tracks all along and the street still probably. the kids probably. are drawing faster than I can sort of manage, mm -hmm. right? So they're just like going up. I'm going, stop, we have a design. We've got a, co there's composition and narrative. At the same time, I started running programs at night. Mm -hmm. And I remember this really vividly because there was a f community center in West Philly and all these kids like it was like baby rock disco duck knife ma i mean like it was just all these big big name graffiti writers they were working on easels mm -hmm. and we had, in the middle of the room we had a still life a bowl of fruit and wilson good came in and he was like i i just can't believe this is happening <laughs> and i said i said everybody loves art yeah and it yep. was art our common ground was our mutual love of art. So, but then, fast forward, mm -hmm. we, after Spring Garden, we started going around to other neighborhoods, and your question is so good because actually people were not that excited. Mm -hmm. People said, you know what, we want jobs, we want houses, mm -hmm. what's art gonna do? Yeah. But it, what sh it shifted in about 1987, 88, because then our conversations took a deeper turn and when mm -hmm. we said to people, we said, let's shift it back to them. What do you want here? Yeah. And then people said, well, things are either done to us or not done and the only mm -hmm. visual stimulation we have in this neighborhood are billboards advertising alcohol and tobacco. Mm -hmm. Our kids are not gonna have beauty and we were like, then let's shift the paradigm. Yeah. How do we make it happen in your neighborhood with something that you want? It's not about us, it's about you. And yeah. we sort of intuitively got that you needed to value the authorship of community mm -hmm. and let that rise and shine a light on it. That's interesting we talked about authorship because like, as we talk about like viral rights and things like that are changing, who actually owns the murals? Is it the community? Would it be the artist? And like, because that's, you know, with five points and all of that type of yeah. stuff going on, the community of, of artists and the community itself felt that that was a landmark. You know, and here in Philly, you know, we marked the landmarks by the blue and yellow signs or, you know, by some other distinction. But five points landmark was kind of overridden by developers. How, how how should the community approach something like that? Like even if it happens in their neighborhood with the five point, how do they approach uh, showing their love for the mural, that they want the mural in the neighborhood? How do they even start to go about that? Well, I, I actually think that citizens have to be relentless in advocating for art. I really do. I think that they can never take it for granted. I worked, you know, for five mayors. Mm -hmm. And I'd say every mayor has been supportive in different ways. So I feel lucky. Yeah. But I will also say that a theme that is a long theme is that art is rarely at the front and center of things, right? Mm -hmm. And so, especially public art in communities. And people have done a really good job in Philly mm -hmm. being our constituents. Like, they fight for us. When city mm -hmm. council, when I testify for our budget and city council says your budget should be increased, that's because that's what they hear from their constituents. Oh, we have nice. a waiting list of 2,000 people who want work. So it's there's a wow. demand for art in our city. But we've always been really cognizant that what mm -hmm. we're doing should be relevant to the citizens. Mm -hmm. So we'll go mm -hmm. far beyond the art. You know, do you need this done, that done? What can we do? Can we facilitate mm -hmm. other city services? Do you need programs? We want to yeah. be the multi-layered, multi-faceted mural arts program. Yeah. But to get back to your really good question, who owns it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm gonna say it's co-owned by the community, the artist and the community. Yep. And then at the end of the day, really, the developer, the owner of the structure can do what they want. Mm -hmm. In some way, I acknowledge that. 
this is all temporary. We're yeah. we're all here in a temporary way, right? Yeah. yeah. It's all sort of fleeting. Yeah. However, I am a huge believer that at the that because the collection is important, because of the weight of what it represents, that we need to approach change with respect, with transparency, with clarity, yeah. and to try to figure out where is the mutuality here, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we're if you're building in a neighborhood and you're taking away a work of art, then you have to understand that's a civic asset mm -hmm. and the stories mm -hmm. that it tells and the lives it reflects. And then you have the responsibility, the moral responsibility to do something, to meet with us, to mm -hmm. meet with the community, but to do nothing mm -hmm. is unacceptable. And that's then I'm gonna, yeah. quote, it begs the question, whose city is it? Whose city? Who yep. has the right mm -hmm. to the city? Yep. And that really is, for me, just like, there's a community person called right <laughs> now, that's Tiffany from Point Reese. <laughs> <laughs> so when we talk about programming and everything, we went to a cool event a couple weeks ago hosted by one of the first people who was the inventors of graffiti, Cornbread, yeah. the legend, which was an awesome event that brought tons of the city's artists and also uh, the old taggers and graffiti murals from New York and Philadelphia down to help revitalize a community. How does a program like that, how, how important is a program like that for just bridging the gap between the, the past and where we're going in the future? Oh, I think it's hugely important because this is what's really interesting is that back in the day, so you had graffiti and murals and we weren't g given much form of legitimacy. I'm going to say that we, people would say to me repeatedly, that you're not doing public art. And I would say, we're in public doing art. And they would say, oh no, public <laughs> art is sculpture. And I'd be like, well, what do you think we're doing then? Yeah. They would say social work. And they mm. said it like in a way mm. that was sort of like, e, you know, yeah. like they had a bit of a lemon in their mouth. So I was like, okay, I get it. This is like elitism at work here. Mm -hmm. So we were determined to fly in the face of that. So be undaunted, be relentless. Do not let them like make you stop. Make you that stop, was the yeah. note to mm -hmm. self, right? But then over the years, a lot has changed. And so you have graffiti, street art, muralism, public art, where they've all sort of blurred. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way, it's nice because I have colleagues in different disciplines and we sort of influence and inspire each mm -hmm. other. I'm inspired by, you know, the, the, the guys and gals who were there at Cornbread's event. I'm yeah. like so excited. So, and they want to work with us. I've gotten tons of emails. Let's plan for next year. Yeah. Let's do this. So, but back then, I mean, I think there were just stricter divider lines, even mm -hmm. between graffiti and murals, like, because we were the anti-graffiti network. Mm -hmm. When we became mural arts, that changed. Mm -hmm. We could use spray. We didn't have rules and, you know, as many rules and regulations. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, I can't condone just writing on walls randomly yeah, without permission, but, you know, graffiti art is wonderful. It's, it's like abstract expressionism. So, you know, so I think a, an event like that really connects the past and the mm -hmm. present and is part of what I see is actually quite contemporary because it's like that that kind of bridge building. Yeah. That's just great for the creative process. Yeah. It that is. that just makes our world richer. So I love I loved it. I was so inspired by that day. So, we're talking about the past and the in the future, the the past has been about you know experiencing mural arts in the physical form but i also seen that mural arts has a digital space that's allowing people on the map to search out murals how do you see mural arts transitioning as the as the experience of art <coughs> becomes more digital with augmented reality and things like that how do yeah. you see mural arts growing in the digital space oh i think that's really fascinating i think that you know the, it's there's so much potential here mm -hmm. one i mean first of all we want we understand that people can't get out everywhere mm -hmm. right so what can we do i mean how can we both have a stronger online presence also an app we want to develop an app but what we're doing now with king brit at 54th and lancaster is mm -hmm. he has a the, built a technology component into the mural where he says he's scoring it like a film and it's virtual reality and so wow. you can use your ipad and iphone and you can actually hear the conestoga angels who used to be the drill team but mm -hmm. I know kind of something. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. But they're they're no longer playing, yep. right? But you hear mm -hmm. the sounds, you hear the basketball just dribbling. You hear, almost like an audio anthropology yes, project. That's okay. exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, King is he says like we're just on the cusp of something, and I'm like, oh, that's right, mm -hmm. and. I, that's fascinating. And then last year when we did Monument Lab, 
um, I thought it was really interesting that so many of the sites had these research hubs where people would fill out a form. You know, it was all about what's a monument for the current city mm-hmm. of Philadelphia. And people would fill out something. Then through technology, we would scan it in. It would end up going to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art. And you could sit there and see idea, idea, idea being generated from all over the city. So Vernon Park, Nara Square, Mifflin Square Park. Yeah. Like idea, like just you could just see a snapshot of Philly coming at you. And then Marisa Williamson did a version virtual tour of African American history mm-hmm. down around um, uh, the the president's house and also wow. in Washington Square Park. So she wow. was a, so you could actually go on a virtual tour and she was your guide mm-hmm. and she mm-hmm. took you through. I mean it's pretty awesome what can be done. So for me I think we've just scratched the surface. Yeah. What's needed from the city or from the community to provide more of those opportunities to make the, the murals more engaging? Well, I, you know, for me, this is all about funding. Yeah. So I think, um, I think the city, the city's been great, but I would really like the city to sort of acknowledge the importance of the collection mm-hmm. for all it represents. And to understand that the future could be like remarkable, yeah. but you know we're we're an interesting city. We have a very hard time multitasking and moving out on many fronts, yes, and understanding that role of art. Art mm-hmm. does have real power, and art is also a multitasker, right? Mm-hmm. So when our guild program, the people sort of coming out of prison are learning about how to do art and building skills, and then they transform rec centers, and then they tr- their tr- own life is transformed. Like, that creative process was critical to their growth, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they could have something, do, be doing something mundane, and maybe they change anyway, possibly. Yeah. But, uh, but being out in public, doing something that's extraordinary, yeah. leads to extraordinary changes. I'm, I'm just Definitely. a believer in that. Definitely. So I think we sort of are misreading the tea leaves here. Mm-hmm. I think like we're not seeing all the potential. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if it were up to me and I had a magic wand, you know, I'd want to triple the number of artists we're working with. I would want to have a fund that was risk capital so people yeah. could use, think about technology in mm-hmm. the arts. Mm-hmm. I would want to triple the amount of opportunities for people in the behavioral health system coming out of prison I would say we serve 2,000 kids annually right now I wish it was Mm 5,000 like I'd Mm -hmm. like us to be more aspirational yeah and so and we need funders who are going to be aspirational we have great funders but they sort of drill down and so that realm of muralism Mm -hmm. sort of is a little neglected right Mm -hmm. it's our smallest pot of money (laughs) Uh, I have I hold on to it like like I don't want it to go away because I and we use it really well we leverage it all over the city Literally, it's a, such a small pot of money. If I were to do, I could probably just do five murals, but because mm-hmm. we leverage it with mm-hmm. private funds, we do like a hundred. Yeah. It's sort of remarkable the list and what we. But it's like, why are we pulling such rabbits out mm-hmm. of hats? Why can't we just sort of acknowledge what yep. we have? This is like Philly. Mm-hmm. That's what I was just saying to the reporter. Like, this the city council people were just here from Atlanta, and they're like in Atlanta, like you have like artists who like fly in from a somewhere else, do a mural, and they were very incensed. They said this one mural sort of is in a black neighborhood, faces a church, mm-hmm. and it was like snakes or something grotesque, and then the artists leave. Yeah, and just and, leave and away. And people were yep. left with that. Yep. And they were like, they said they went around Philly and wanted to weep because it was the work was so beautiful, beautiful. and yeah. relevant. Yep. They couldn't believe it. They gave me this giant hug. <laughs> they said, come to Atlanta. Yeah. I was like, oh, they were just like, so that to me is like, we should be so proud of our collection. Yeah. Let's mine it. Let's work it. Let's do more. Let's employ more people. Yeah. Let's nurture young artists and artists of color. What are we waiting for? Yeah. Time is now. I'm like the kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm such a hyper person. I'm like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so how do people engage or how would you like folks to engage with mural arts to provide more of these opportunities <clears throat> to, to be more of a patron for the arts? How can they engage with mural arts and Jane? Well, I would say... First of all, if people have ideas, they should come to us because we're like sponges. Mm -hmm. Uh, Artists are interested, they should apply to us. Um, But also, you know, 
we have an, a young friends group, we have an advisory committee, we have a board, we have a tour program, we have volunteer opportunities throughout the organization so people can volunteer. Yeah. They can donate and you could donate ten dollars. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be like thousands. So, you know, Bernie Sanders raised a lot of money in really tiny contributions so people can support. And as much as I'd love there to be more government money, I understand there are limits to government money. So our ability to leverage public and private funds and be really entrepreneurial um, is important. So I, I get that, that it's a relentlessness. So everybody who is listening, anybody who's out there, you can contribute in some way. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jane. Again, we have Miss Jane Golden of Mural Arts Philadelphia, and that's Reality Talks. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and tune in next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Reality Talks. You can find more information on Jane Golden and the people and projects at Mural Arts Philadelphia by visiting muralarts.org. If you like what you hear on this podcast, please subscribe and give an honest rating on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. This will help ensure this podcast reaches new listeners who will also be able to benefit from these conversations. If you like more information on our topics or this podcast, please follow us on all your social media platforms at Art Above Reality and leave your comments. We would love to hear from you. Thank you again and see you all next episode.